Hi everybody, welcome to GT Coding. In this tutorial series, we are creating this simple CRUD application using Next.js and AppWrite. Now in the previous video, we created the home page where we are displaying these uh, terms from the AppWrite database. So here we can see we have these two documents and we are displaying them over here. Now in this video, we will add the functionality of adding a new interpretation. So let's get started. Right now, if I click on this add new button, we have this page over here. So we have already created the UI of this page. So let's go back to our source code. And if you go to this create folder and if you go to this page.tsx file, here we have the UI of our create page. Now, the first thing we need to do is uh, we need to create some states to store these data. So let's go back. And here, let's go ahead and create a state for form data. And let's type set form data. And let's set it equal to use state. And we'll just import it from React. Now, by default, this will contain an object with term and interpretation. So, by default, we will set these two values to blank. And since we are using use state, we need to change this to a client component. So, let's type use client. Right now let's create a couple more states so let's tap const and let's create a state called is loading and let's tap set is loading equals use state and by default we'll just set it to false and let's create one more state for the error so let's tap const error set error equals use state and it'll be of type string or null and by default we'll just set it to null Right now let's create a function to update the form data. So let's create a function called handle input change. And here we'll get a parameter, I'll just call it E. And here we need to store the data. So let's tap set form data. Now since we have added this as an object, we need to go ahead and first of all get all the previous data. So I'll just call it prev data. Right now let's go ahead and type parenthesis and here we need to create an object and first of all we'll just extract everything that we already have so let's tap dot 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 prev data and then we need to type square brackets e dot target dot name colon e dot target dot value so what this will do is uh, it will first of all extract all the data that we already have so it will get the term and the interpretation and after that, we need to update one of these values. So we're going to take a look at the variable that we get over here. So if you scroll down, here we can see we have the input field. And in that we have this name. And this name term will be replaced by this. And then we'll just get the value that we have over here. So here I'll just create a value attribute. And here let's tap form data dot term. So it will get this value and store it over here. So if you make changes to this term it will update the term and if you make changes to the interpretation it will update it over here so we are updating both the data inside this single form data state so let's scroll down and here also i'll just add a value and let's tap form data dot interpretation now when there is any change in these input fields we need to call this function right here handle input change so let's type on change and here let's type handle input change and let's do the same over here for the text area so i'll just copy this and i'll just paste it over here and now let's scroll up and uh, here we have this error so we need to add the type so let's tap colon and we'll set the type to change event and here let's type html input element or html text area element so now we don't have any errors now I'll just go ahead and console.log the form data so that we know that it is working all right. So let's tap form data and let's go back to our website and let's open the console. And here if you just type testing, we can see that it is being displayed over here. So the data is being updated correctly. It is displayed over here as well. So now let's go back and uh, let's remove this console log from here and uh, let's create the function to submit the data. And before that, let's go ahead and uh, here, instead of just adding this text, add interpretation. 
let's go ahead and add it inside a conditional statement so here let's add curly braces and let's tap is loading so if it is loading then we'll just display adding and if it is not loading then we'll just type add interpretation and we'll also disable the button when it is being loaded so here let's type type submit and also let's tap disabled equals is loading so now what will happen is that if it is loading then the button will be displayed and it will also display this text adding and here below this form let's also create a paragraph for the error messages so let's tap error which is a state that we created over here and if we have an error so let's tap ampersand ampersand and if you have the error then let's create a paragraph and here we'll just display the error so i'll just tap error over here and let's add some class names so let's tap class name and let's set the text to red 500 and margin top of 4. right now you scroll up and create the function called the handle submit so here let's tap const handle submit equals async and here we'll get some data and i'll just call it e and for the type i'll just type react dot form event and here the first thing we will do is we'll prevent the default behavior which is reloading the page so i'll just tap e dot prevent default and now let's go ahead and call this function when the form is submitted so here for the form let's tap on submit and here let's call this function handle submit and let's scroll up and let's continue writing this function so the first thing we will do is if one of these values is empty then we'll just display an error message so let's tap if exclamation form data dot turn or exclamation form data dot interpretation so if one of these is not available then let's set the error to please fill in all the fields and i'll just go ahead and return so the rest of the code of the function will not be executed so now let's go back and uh, let's click on add interpretation button and we can see we have this error please fill in all the fields so let's go back and uh, here if we have both the data then we'll just go ahead and set the error to null and uh, i'll just set the ease loading state to true so it should start loading from here so it will display the adding message over here and uh, now let's create a try catch block and first of all i'll just go ahead and uh, in the catch i'll just tap console.log error and let's tap set error and let's set the error to something went wrong please try again and let's add a finally so this will run even if we have an error and we'll just set the is loading state to false right now let's go ahead and start writing the code for the try so if you go back over here to api we have created this api route called api interpretations and that we have this route and here we can see we have this post function so we need to pass the data over here so let's type const response equals await fetch and uh, let's type api interpretations and for the method let's type post and then we need to add headers and i will just set it to content type of application json and then let's add the body now for the body we need to parse it into json so let's tap json dot stringify and let's just pass this form data over here so we have this form data over here so i'll just tap form data and now let's go ahead and check whether the response is not okay so let's tap if exclamation response dot okay then we'll just go ahead and throw a new error and let's type failed to create interpretation and if everything goes all right we'll just go back to the home page so for that we need to use the router so let's scroll up and here i just type router equals use router and let's import it from next navigation and let's scroll down and here we need to type router dot push and let's provide the link of the home page and with that i think we have completed the code for adding the interpretation so let's go back to our website and uh, let's try adding a new interpretation so i just type google chrome and uh, let's type 
a web browser and now let's click on add interpretation and we can see that we have been redirected to the home page and we have the new data over here and if you go back to app right and if i reload this page here we can see that google chrome is being displayed so the add functionality is working all right all right so that's basically it for this video if you have any doubts you can ask in the comments below and if you like this video please click on the like button and subscribe to this channel to get the latest video updates thanks a lot for watching have a nice day